So the markets are crashing and this gives a great opportunity for quants as compared to traditional traders or investors. And in this video, we are going to discuss how quants have a massive edge in the way they protect their portfolio. And we'll also discuss the strategies that reward them in these volatile markets. So a few months ago, I had um, an email from one of our student members and their concern was that why do I close all the positions and have no other trade on. Uh, it's generally generating alpha when you are sitting on cash. So uh, my response to that was protecting your portfolio when there is a black swan event is in a sense generating alpha as you are generating more cash to invest when the market turns around at the bottom or for other strategies like mean reverting. Uh, and I also gave an example. There are reasons uh, why most hedge funds, including Buffett, along only and move to cash. And this is why. Uh, so this email was way back on October, and uh, I don't think the student understood it back then, or maybe he did, but now, right now, with the current market conditions, it's a perfect example on why uh, going to cash is quite important. Uh, so let's start with the first thing that quants do. Like quants have basically a kill switch, so it could be based on a, spe a specific indicator or a volatile model. So for example, if the volatility goes above a certain a threshold or if the price goes below a certain threshold then uh, the market essentially uh, with strategy essentially shuts down um, so for example here if I can get into one of the strategies or a couple of strategies we'll discuss a, a couple of the portfolio based strategies um, so I'm just gonna uh, this was in the Prometheus one Uh, so here, if you look at Google, there was a shutdown on that strategy on 11th of March. And basically, 11th of March was a shutdown for many of the strategies uh, in our uh, Prometheus content. And this is basically a static one. You can see, again, 11th of March here, uh, Meta. And the list goes on because it kind of protects your portfolio. So uh, this is one of the static models. Now, on the other hand, if you can look into volatility-based models or the AI or ML models based on different input features, so that is there in our decision tree strategy as well. So uh, in the decision tree strategy, which basically trades a plethora of stocks, if you can go into the order section, um, it kind of started shutting down on the 26th, 24th, 10th, early days of March. Uh, some of them basically on the 10th of March and then some of them on the 24th and 26th as well. So uh, after the 10th of March, I only ended one trade and that was in the PLT. I was basically trying to test out different things. Uh, so it's more a mechanical approach the quants have and this approach kind of protects them, protects their portfolio and that kind of saves cash. So uh, there might be assumption that, hey, you're not doing any other trade, but actually you are doing another trade. You're doing a mean reverting strategy. So, uh, so basically the strategies that quants do during recessions are fundamental fundamentally mean reverting strategies and that is done on ETF and that's what we recommend our students we do long and short on ETF and there's a reason why uh, we don't do shorts uh, in stocks because there is an issue with margin requirements which I will come in a bit so long and short on ETF and not stocks uh, so what quants kind of make use is that they use the volatility contraction and expansion so whenever there's um, it kind of swings away from the mean, that's when they will sell. And one of our strategies in that time was um, just going to close this. It's on SPY because we'll only be doing it on index ETF. All our mean reverting strategies are on index ETF. So if you can see here, they created a short strategy right on 2nd of April and are will now be generating extremely mean reverting strategies. So even here, if you can look at it, it's like short, uh, going long here when the market's going down extreme and then going short here, long here, short here. So really making use of that opportunity. So if I can look into, the, this is the buy and hold equity line, the blue line. So if you can look at this graph here, uh, this is the dot com bubble. So when the market went down, you can see the strategy uh, making a ton of profit here. And when the uh, market went down the 2008 recession again you can see the steep graph here and again during the volatile um, months few years ago again uh, the market's making money here so here already the SPY is going down and still it's holding on it might give an opportunity so if the market does continue this volatile recessionary environment the mean reverting strategies uh, will kick in and will make money and if in case the market's go back to normal and it's not volatile anymore, uh, then suddenly the other momentum or a trend following strategies goes up and then 
uh, that strategy is a long only strategy comes into effect uh, so again going back so the volatility contraction expansion there's index ETF and there's also diversification of strategies so there's not just one mean reverting strategy it's like a couple of mean reverting strategies both in the AI ML end uh, and also in the um, in the normal static based uh, strategies as well and then there's TLT and gold strategy so that is one of the most complicated AI and ML strategies that we have uh, so I'm going to get that on here, LSTM covariance. So it's a long short-term memory neural network with the Markovitz portfolio and covariance model updated on this strategy. So this basically trades the SPY, GLD and TLT at all times. And I'll just get the results in here. So basically what this strategy does is that it just reallocates the money to SPY, gold and TLT. Uh, so based on the different market environments and based on the training data set. So again, you've got to remember we are training across a specific model from 2000, 2010 and using that uh, as an instrument to do the testing. Uh, and this is basically the forward testing results. So you can see here uh, it's adapting to a TLT, GLD and SPY. So if you can look at uh, gold at this period of time. You can see gold has been going up a lot. So strategies like this, which uh, allocates your portfolio based on different market environments is always that good so again TLT as well the last month April month again so has been volatile so SO has been SPY but the goal is essentially uh, making you money and cancelling out the um, cancelling out the losses from the SPY so uh, this one as well if you can look at the compounding annual return that's 10% with a drawdown of 24% that is much higher uh, than that of the SPY which is basically 10 divided by 55 uh, which is 0.18 so uh, all our strategies has beaten the CAGR to drawdown ratio of S&P 500 which is 0 0.18 so with this LSTM strategy is 0 0.46 uh, the recurring neural network is 0 0.49 so we've also got combined models like the RNN plus regression or the RNN plus support vector machines um, so yeah so that's some of the strategies that the quants will have so all these strategies are run simultaneously but some strategies will be shut down uh, when the markets are extremely volatile, the long only strategies, and then the money is reallocated to the mean reverting strategies. And when the markets are back in you know normal trending, uptrending move, then obviously the other strategy will call for long and then you enter long. Um, so again, coming back to why we're not going to no shorts. Uh, so as you can probably know, you are having lots of news about margin calls. Uh, across different retail traders and also hedge funds and institutional investors everybody is getting margin calls right now and uh, if you're using interactive brokers many of them have already got a message uh, saying a liquidation warning so uh, the issue with this is even if you're protected these brokers and exchanges when the market is volatile what they do is that they increase the margin requirements uh, they increase their portfolio margin and shorts on stocks especially have fundamentally higher margin requirements and they will increase it much higher so even if you think your portfolio is kind of in the green it can get a margin call and that's a problem with portfolio margin because of the margin increase done by the brokerages and exchanges again another thing that we teach in our course is about the leverage we stick to minor leverage like two is to one or three is to one tops and that's how we kind of get a small tiny edge so for example here if you do a small leverage of uh, two is to one we get like 20 percent compound annual return with a drawdown of 48 percent and even then it's much better than the uh, CAGR uh, to drawdown of SPY 500 um, so we also avoid strictly leveraged products. That's also another thing that I get in lots of emails. Are you doing futures? Are you doing options? Are you doing Forex? And we always, uh, we always say we don't do leveraged products because in situations like this, people lose a lot of money, whether it's in FX. FX is fundamentally, most of the people who trade FX are trading either on the futures uh, or in the CFD brokers, and they are all fundamentally leveraged products. So is futures and options. So uh, you are going to get margin calls in all of these things so our fundamental goal is that to minimize as much as leverage po uh, possible from a risk management perspective we are here to protect our cash and then in any upside we try to make money out of that so fundamentally the quant trading edge is pretty much boring and mechanical the strategies are already placed uh, it's very much diversified across trend following momentum mean reverting strategies gold tlt correlated uncorrelated you know moving the funds based on the different training data and testing data uh, we've got a proper risk management through leverage it's not like most people think risk management is like putting a stop loss or something no the real risk management comes from the diversification of strategies 
and also the products that you trade. What kind of products are you trading? Are you trading uh, futures? Are, do you know the real problem with these kind of leverage products? And that is the margin requirements. And those increase in margins can squeeze you out of all positions, including uh, your profitable positions. Uh, and also, it's also stress tested across many recession periods. So what we do is that during the training period, we actually make sure that that interval has got many volatile market movements. Like, for example, there is the so generally what we do is that we have either a rollover training period or we have a fixed training period where it's like from 2000 to 2010. Uh, so in that period, we had the 2001 dot-com bubble and the 2008 recession. So the markets are kind of uh, prepared. I mean, the model is kind of prepared because we are trained on that data. So for example, here, this is the recurring neural network strategy. And if you can go into the train model, uh, it's from 2000 to 2009, December 31st, where we used to train the recurring neural network. Uh, but the test is on from 2010 to uh, the most recent date. Uh, so that's what we do. So that's the advantage of machine learning models that we can actually feed in these crazy moments and uh, the model can essentially train itself to prepare for these kind of strategies. So when you say the strategies have a specific edge or something, it's got, um, it's not really anything special. It's just that the model is fundamentally trained on that data and we have tested it across those periods. So now uh, we've got a volatile moment right now. Um, and that can be used as training for the future as well. So you can imagine how much training we can get over the years. And that can also be used as testing. For example, uh, we can use the 2000, um, 2010 period as training and see how it has worked in uh, right now. And if it hasn't worked that well, that's not a good sign, isn't it? That's a sign that we can we can use that information to learn even better. And that's, a, that's the advantage of machine learning models that it keeps on learning uh, and it depends on what you feed it as well. So fundamentally, that's the edge of the quants, that they have the training and the testing data and the models are much more superior in learning as compared to uh, maybe retail traders who are kind of new into the market and who is not equipped with the knowledge of what happened uh, during the 2008 recession or how to apply. Uh, so just to conclude on everything that we have discussed here, um, the key takeaways that quants do is basically they have a kill switch to move to cash. Um, and they generally have also got mean reverting or volatility based strategies, which kind of makes lots of money during the extreme volatile movements. They also have a portfolio which has got TLT and gold, which is trained um, on recessionary environments so it can allocate capital between SPY, TLT, and gold. So, in this current scenario, gold is making higher highs. So, you're essentially making money from gold and also. Uh, from the volatility based strategies if the volatility continues they the volatility based strategies will continue to make money uh, and if not uh, it goes back to the uh, the not goes back it goes into the long only strategies where the trade signals will be generated because volatility or specific indicators has called for the markets to go uh, signals to go long um, so the other thing is that they use minimum leverage and no leverage products um, they completely avoid futures and options and their leverage is like minimalistic just to beat the S&P 500 by and hold of 10% to 55% drawdown. Maybe it's 1.5, maybe it's 2, depending upon your risk profile and on your test results. Say uh, they also don't do any shorts in stocks because of the margin requirement issue, except they do it on the index ETF and that's what mean reverting strategies do. They do long and short on the index ETFs. Uh, the strategies are previously stress tested to survive any scenario. So we are actually feeding into uh, the model all kinds of crazy volatile movements to actually understand uh, how the model performs and to whether the model will survive, whether the strategy will survive this scenario. Uh, now, all these things is very boring for quants and um, they kind of pretty much do nothing during this volatile movement except reallocating capital or whatever the order say to do. That's all they do. If it's automated, if it's algorithmically uh, executed, then it's automatically done. Otherwise, you have to do it manually. I do most of my thing manually. Uh, but that's it. That's what quants do. It's really boring. It's really mechanical, but it works. Um, so hope you got the gist of what we are trying to achieve in this video. Uh, thanks and have a good day. Bye-bye.